can we say in this moment that it is the truth that you do not definitively know which one of these men is her biological father? I don't know. You don't know. Do you know who her father is? He's her father, like... I'm not. She just said I'm not the father. Not he the is father. not her biological father. He's the father. only person I'm I was with. Father. From this DNA report is that Mr. Washington wasn't there. We, we wasn't together. She was in a relationship with another guy. I always got a rubber in my back pocket. A, a condom. Keep that. Even today. <laughs> yeah. Actions have consequences. And sometimes a two-night stand can create a lifetime of responsibility. And the same rodeo is up and running in the case of Mr. Washington. After discovering he had fathered a child due to a hit and quit thing. The plaintiff ended up in court. Whereas Ms. Steinhardt chose to deny the alleged father's statement and claimed something which created a complex legal conflict. Moving on to the plaintiffs. Mr. Washington, you say the defendant, Ms. Steinhardt, was a two night stand that went too far. And as a result, she's claiming you fathered her three month old daughter, Amaya, your fiance. Ms. Calmer says your relationship is in turmoil because of Ms. Steinhardt. And you're both desperate to prove you are not the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, yeah. Miss so, the trial started off with some rational questions and then bam. Mr. Washington's girl spilled the tea that Ms. Steinhardt is just a jealous homewrecker causing all sorts of trouble. Seriously, who would do that? Like, why even bother stooping that low? It's just ridiculous. Well, the real reason is because she just wants my family. She wants Nobody to be wants me. Nobody wants your family. First of all... Nobody wants your family. You know Nobody something. wants this man. Call me every day when you was pregnant. Knowing that I was pregnant with my child, to talking about your child like I was gonna even put my two cents in your conversation. You're the only one asking no, for a DNA not, test. All right, so lady, yes, he you was. About DNA he test. said that wasn't his child, so that's he's what I'm telling thinking. you that. But when he's with me, is a different no. story. Oh my! You won't even believe what went down here. So get this: after a little argument with his fiance, he got frisky with Ms. Steinhardt. Can you imagine? He really crossed the line this time. Like, how could he go from being engaged to getting down dirty with someone else? It sounds scandalous. Right. Me and my me and my fiance got into a little disagreement, and then we I went I was staying at a friend's house, and I met Teresa over there. All right. He asked me if I was seeing anyone. I said no. I asked him the same question. Also, I said, Are you seeing any anyone? He said no. No, that's I a lie, Your Honor. Then we took it from there. We was together like that whole week. And when you say together, that means having sex? No. So let me take you to the part where mommy found out that the supposed baby daddy had a fiance. It turned out that the plaintiff's girl caught them outside the grocery store, but they totally ghosted her. Like, talk about being a bunch of sneaky snakes, trifling, I must say. Um, basically, we was walking to the store and she was yelling from the other side of the block, like, oh, I see you. And then I said, oh, I see you, I see you over there. Then they started walking like this. They out, <laughs> run it, go. Need to stay behind Sorry. The but they was out. They was ghosts. Nowhere to be found. However, the way Ms. Calmer found out about her pregnancy was straight up a jaw dropper. She was going through Facebook when she stumbled upon some pictures of her fiance on Ms. Steinhardt's page. This must have shaken her to the core. And I took a pregnancy test and it came back positive and I let him know. Ms. Calmer, how did you find out about the pregnancy? All right, I found out through social media. She posted all those pictures that you have here with a picture of a pregnancy test on the social media page and said, oh, my baby fall. Things are heating up. The baby mama just dropped a bombshell and claimed that Mr. Washington's fiance is expecting, and he is doubting if the baby is really his. But Ms. Calmer didn't buy it at all and shut down those accusations like this. I didn't know she was pregnant to the end because a few times I asked him, I was like, why are you always with me and never going to see your children? He's like, oh, honestly, she's pregnant with a baby girl and I don't know if she's mine. Mm -hmm. The screaming and blaming in the courtroom are not going to prove who the daddy is. The only DNA results will. So let's put an end to this paternity chase and get some scientific evidence up in here and see what envelope is holding for the baby. Mr. Washington, you are not the father. Thank you. Now have a great day with your life and your baby. She's beautiful, by the way. He's not the father. Do you know who her father is? He's her father, like... I'm not. She just said I'm not the father. Not he the is father. not her not biological father. He's the father. only person I'm I was with. Father. A mother just hauled her own daughter into court for being an absolutely wild child. Ms. Co. asserted that she can't handle her daughter's behavior, which includes sleeping around with a bunch of guys. And she's also convinced that her daughter's kid isn't even her boyfriend's. So, Ms. Co.'s demanding a DNA test to expose the truth once and for all. Let's move to plaintiffs. Ms. Co., you say you're here today because your daughter is an out-of- 
control teenager and she needs help. Furthermore, you claim that uh, you have serious doubts uh, that your daughter's boyfriend, Mr. Boyce, is the father of your seven-month-old grandson. You say Mr. Boyce has been a good father to the baby, but that your daughter has numerous sexual partners, and so he needs to know the truth. Yes, ma'am. So basically, the trial started off with Judge Lauren asking Ms. Cow how her daughter was making her life hard as a mother. As we mentioned before, the defendant was a pure mess. The freaky teenager had even tried to knock down a cop, and Ms. Cow's was clearly dealing with more than she could handle. How to do or why to do it? Give me specific instances. Okay, from fights at school, hitting a police officer, not once, but twice. She hitting a police a, officer. She punched a police officer twice, twice. I get the phone call to go up to the school. I get there. I was thankful that I knew this police officer. He looks at me and he says, this is your daughter? You won't believe the other incident that went down. Baby mama went all out and tried to plow the plaintiff and her girlfriend down and caused some serious damage to her. It's just appalling for us all as well. How could a daughter hurt her own mother? This girl really needs some psychological help for her mental well-being. You brought drama to the house. That's not you the made truth. a phone call saying, my mother and her girlfriend just jumped on me. Y'all, you come mess them I up. I said her girlfriend just jumped on me, and I did have but somebody that wasn't come true. over there. She made that phone call. Them guys, they loaded up. They came to my house. They bust out every window. They busted out my car. They they destroyed my house. However, Ms. Co claimed that her daughter is promiscuous and even brought her gang into the house. She asserted that baby mama has been sleeping around with several guys at the time she conceived the baby. And that is the reason why the plaintiff has brought up the paternity issue. Friends are any of them more than friends. Are one of them was the guy I was dating. And the other one was just friends. They were dating my other two friends. So that brings brings us to why we're here, because now you have a grandchild. But it's because not just one guy. See, that's what she's saying. But it's not just one guy. There was somebody else in the picture. Afterward, Judge Lake summoned the presumed father to the courtroom and inquired about his stance on the paternity matter. He revealed that he believed that he is the father of the baby, and he stepped up to the plate. So today, he shares a heartwarming bond with him. Uh, that this child is very important to you. Yeah, he really is. Am I correct? Yes. Please tell the court about that. Uh, I feel like uh, from the beginning, I knew it was a possibility, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying, he, he, made, he made me grow more, you know what I'm saying, since he's been around. Because my mom, she, she passed away. And once I told her about it, you know what I'm saying? She just, oh, that's my grandbaby. However, Mr. Boyce also has some doubts regarding the baby's paternity. He stated that he and Ms. Co were not in a relationship at the time of conception and cannot recall if they engaged in safe sexual practice. But the baby mama reacted over his testimony like this. And you should naturally have some doubt. You have that, right? Where yeah, you don't but, know. I have doubts, but... Why, why in particular do you have doubts? Because on time it happened, it's like, we, we wasn't together. She was in a relationship with another guy. I, don't, I always got around in my back pocket. After all that has been said, it was truly exhausting to witness young women paying the price of wrongdoings. The only call left was to move on to the conclusive part of this trial. Let's hope DNA results will bring closure for the baby. Mr. Boyce, you are not the father. Yes, you are. You, you're his father. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, you are. I'm still his father. I know this was not the way probably any of you wanted this to turn out because I can see it in all of your faces. Caught in the trap of paternity issue, Ms. Thomas and her daughter, Ms. Fields, arrived at the courtroom asserting that Ms. Armster has entrapped his son, Mr. Griffin, in a paternity trap. They further claim that the defendant is promiscuous and has multiple guys in her life. So they want a DNA test to resolve this contentious issue once and for all. Let's move on to the plaintiff's points. Ms. Thomas, you are here today along with your daughter, Ms. Fields, seeking the results of a paternity test on the defendant's five-month-old son son, Cameron. Uh, you claim that Ms. Armster is promiscuous, had sex with other men around the time she conceived, and is lying to trap your son into believing he is her baby's father. Yes, yes, Your Honor. The trial began with a startling revelation. Turned out the baby's mommy had ended her relationship with the accused baby daddy, yet she suddenly popped out and claimed Mr. Griffin of fathering her child. Grandma voiced her skepticism like this. 
she okay. started high school. My son was in high school and uh, came home and told me that she was pregnant. But they had broken up for four months. And then she all of a sudden pops back up. Saying, it wasn't a pop and, and up. You we popped back up, up somewhere. You had we, left. No, but my son said up. that she said we broke that she up. was pregnant. She come back saying that she was pregnant. Broke. But the defendant vehemently denied all accusations and put on a convincing performance. She claimed that the plaintiff's son was the only person involved at the time of conception. She refuted all claims like this. I'm not claiming you were cheating on him. I don't know whether you were cheating or were, or if you weren't, but if you sleep with more than one man unprotected during a period of time, the time of conception, then they both could potentially that, be the father of your child. Despite Mr. Griffin's support for the defendant, he has expressed doubts about his paternity, possibly because he was absent during the conception window. I'm curious to know why he would continue to stand with Ms. Armster if he has such doubts. I have my doubts as well because I wasn't around her a lot of the time during the conception of him. And I just, I feel this way because it's been going on so long, I just, I really need to find out. Like, and I, I believe her and what she's saying, but I don't think my family would lie to me and, you know, tell me anything wrong to set me off track. On the procession of testimony, it was revealed even when the baby was born, grandma called her son and advised him to walk out. And I think daddy took that advice seriously like that. So you're in the hospital, you have the baby. Was Mr. Griffin there? Yes. You yes, were there. I was. So you're there for the birth of the baby and then yes, your was. mom calls and says, don't sign the birth certificate. And what do you do? Well, I didn't sign it. But I didn't, dis I didn't not sign it because of what my mom said. I signed it for my own reasons. I didn't know for sure. Grandma revealed a shocking part of this saga, not of one or two. Plaintiff stated that there are four other men claiming to be Ms. Armster's baby's father. Oh my. Woman, how you were dealing with four other relationships at one time. Now that's promiscuous. You know, and I tell my son, other men are claiming to be this baby's father. Other men? Yes. Oh yeah. They don't They're claiming that they are the child's father. Yes, and she just told my you son. You say men, that's plural. Men. How, how many? Men. Four at the most that I know. They are they are popping up at they my are. mom's house at um at one uh, particular time. One after another revelation. The baby mama's own sister is going around telling people that Mr. Griffin isn't the dad of Ms. Armster's son, but the defendant isn't taking it lying down. And to defy this claim, defendant played smart and knit a story like this. Ms. Armster, your own sister is now going around the town saying no. that she Mr. Goes. Griffin is not the no. father of your child? Me and my sister, this is how it went. Me and my sister was arguing. We was fighting. We had fell out for some reason like we always do. And she don't even she want got to mad. around my, bro my she son. Got, she you think you want him for yourself. She got mad. All of the back and forth had taken a toll on the defendant, and the irony was that there was no hope of them changing. The only hope in this situation was DNA proof. Let's see if that envelope is hiding something good for her or not. Mr. Griffin, you are not his father. Mom, don't do that. Mr. Griffin, I know this wasn't the answer you wanted to hear. I've been everything for him. Everything. I, I do anything for him. I still want to be there for him. Boy. Yeah, he's but he's not. And you said you loved I still his mother. Be there for him. Due to the girlfriend's confession of being unfaithful, Mr. Jordan stepped up in the court claiming that Ms. Heim tricked him into signing the birth certificate of her baby. He now seeks a DNA test to confirm that he is not the biological father and wishes to have his name removed from the birth certificate. Let's catch up on the plaintiff's points. Mr. Jordan, you claim the defendant tricked you into signing her daughter's birth certificate and being a daddy. But two years later, you were told that another man is her biological father. You opened your case because you want DNA proof you are not the father so you can get your name removed from the birth certificate. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So the trial began on this note. It turned out that she lied to him about everything, even regarding another man having a DNA test. I think forging and lying must be her favorite hobby. Yes. Explain. Um. She tricked me into thinking that I was the I was the father. She tricked me into thinking that that Caitlyn was my was my first daughter. She she tricked me into thinking that that the other guy hadn't got a paternity test on Caitlyn because she told me, oh, he already got one, and you know what I'm saying. I, that's why I know it's just you. Uh, she tricked me into thinking that that family was something sacred. However, Judge Lauren hopped up into the deceiving part. It was revealed that the baby mama was busy with another guy even when she was in a committed relationship. Then what is making her so certain about Mr. Jordan fathering her child? I, um, I, he's a great father. And I only had sex with one man when we were together. And I had sex with him one time, and but we've been messing around for seven years and I never became pregnant. I met Chris and all of a sudden I came pregnant. So I know 
I, Chris is the father. Up next, Judge Lauren asked about all the well-going things that went down the line. Plaintiff revealed that the truth spilled out in the argument the baby mama was having with her family member. Well, man, I think that must have traumatized her to the core. But this is what I don't understand. It was all going well. It was, you know what I'm saying? And, and so and how does it go wrong? This is where it goes wrong. Her and the family member get, gets into like an altercation or whatnot, like an argument. It wasn't even an altercation, it was an argument. And it was like, they, they started like throwing dirt on each other, you know what I mean? So she said something about this family member's in front in front of this family member's boyfriend or whatever. So she turned, so the family member turned around and was like, well, why you ain't told Chris that? He's not Caitlyn's dad. Oh my, this is appalling. Like finding out your baby's picture with another man acting as a father. To support his claims, Mr. Jordan brought some serious evidence in the court like this. Caitlyn's two years old, you think you have a daughter in the perfect girl, you got a good life. Yeah, um, I actually have uh, evidence. Oh, let me see that. I so see. you think you're having a good life and then they get into an argument when Caitlyn's too, a family member of Miss Heim, and they start going off on one another. And then like everything just comes right out right then. And I'm like, and it so hit me. The hit family like member shows you look. pictures. Yeah. The other alleged baby daddy was summoned to court, and he testified that Ms. Heim considered him also in the paternity consequences. Hmm, I think it's time for baby mama to spill the truth before wasting a minute. Do you believe Caitlyn is your daughter? Yes, that's my baby. She told me when she got pregnant, she like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, what you telling me for? She like, well, it's not Chris, because me and Chris been together a year and a half, and we ain't got pregnant. Soon you touch me, I get pregnant. Yeah, no, he's lying. I, when I came back in town in April, I, get, I had sex, and then I found out I was pregnant in June, so how is that possible? I just called him and let him know that I was pregnant. The defendant's testimony was doing nothing but was making things more shady, so Judge Lake caught her web of cheating and told the truth behind this all mess like that. I wasn't gonna let you stand up here and have a smirk on your face like this was a game. It, I because know you're the mother a of a beautiful little girl, and you know she deserves more, and now I know why you know she deserves more is because you also deserve more and you didn't get it. Can we say in this moment that it is the truth that you do not definitively know which one of these men is her biological father? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Okay, so enough of this testimony. Nothing helped at all. They were still there from where they started, so the only thing that can help them are results. Time to get those results to save the baby from this paternity conflict. Is the father of the child Caitlin Jordan? It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan, you are Caitlyn's biological father. Mr. Knight, I know you really thought Caitlyn was your biological child. How are you feeling in this moment? Tired of her ex-boyfriend dodging child support, the mother of a three-year-old child brings her ex to court to prove that he is the biological father of her son. But Mr. Lee asserted that he is sure that Ms. Brewington's child doesn't belong to him, and she is claiming this for solely financial gain. Ms. Brewington, you are here to prove your three-year-old son, Giovanni, is Mr. Lee's biological child, and you claim Mr. Lee has been a father to your son since the day he was born and is denying paternity because he wants to avoid paying child support. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The baby mama testified that she is 100% sure that the defendant is the father of her son and makes straight out clear that his claims are nothing but bluffing. She started off coming strong like that. Let's peep at her assertions. Yes, Your Honor. I am without a doubt 100% certain that he is my son's father. Not only was I only sleeping with him, we were actually working on our relationship. We already have a child from a previous situation. We got back together. We're working on us. So when I found out I was pregnant, I didn't think it was going to be a shock or a surprise. However, Mr. Lee had her reasons that were the bone of contention in believing the plaintiff's statements. Turned out that they were not cool in their relationship, but living in the same house. See how Ms. Brewington bashed him. At the time that Jill was conceived, we were not having no type of intercourse. We were not cool at the moment. You don't believe you were working on the relationship at the time Giovanni was conceived? No, not at all. You weren't together? No, not at all. Your Honor, I was living with him. We were living in the same house in the same bed. Were you living in the same house? Around the time, yes. On the procession of trial, mommy revealed that the alleged baby daddy is not only denying the child, but also denying her pregnancy by telling people that she is just fat, not carrying a child. Ha! Who on earth does this stupid trick to refute a child? He was telling people I was just getting fat. He was like, she just eats a lot of fast food. Everybody was rubbing, my friends were rubbing my stomach. I'm showing ultrasounds to people. He's like, don't believe her, she's just fat. The entire time, I'm talking about, I'm going into labor. He's like, no, you're not. 
What kind of denial is this? Mr. Lee, you're taking denial too far. Exactly. So even after refusing pregnancy and baby, why did he sign the birth certificate? I mean, boy, what were you thinking while doing these kind of stupid things? If you know that's your baby, just be a man. He actually didn't even, um, they asked about the birth certificate and everything. He signed the birth certificate. He named my son. He wouldn't even, he was like, no, I'm not letting you give my son no dumb name. I'm, I'm naming him. I actually told him to, I was like, you don't want to wait? Until, you know, until we do a DNA test. I offer the DNA test in the hospital. She did not say that, Yon. She did not say that. But you signed the birth certificate, right? Yes, I did. Either way, both sides and the judge were hoping the plaintiff was the father. As if not, it will damage the baby for her whole life. Let's see if fate will have mercy on them or not. Now it was time for the result. Mr. Lee, you are not the father. Oh, told you. Hold up. I already knew. Uh, I told you. Don't look at me like that. I don't know God's plan. Who else? It was you that Did you just that. inject God in this? I, I, I'm, I did not put him in this. I, I'm just saying. No, I'm just... Look, hold on, hold on. Now, the plan of Giovanni being on this earth might be God, but the lie you told about his paternity is your own.